What's going on, guys? We're here at the PCA 2023. I'm Renee with Neptune Cigars, and I'm standing here with Mr. Pete Johnson himself. Pete, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. Ah, you're welcome, brother. Thanks for coming. How's the show going? We're on day two now. How's yeah, it's good. I mean, pretty steady, and uh, honestly, a great response for all the new products. Uh, we're we're happy. We love coming to the show, and we love people seeing the new product, and just the brand support from everybody has been a, a really amazing over the last few years. Yeah. So, yeah. And how was the last calendar year for you guys? Ah. Uh, Last calendar year was amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was our biggest year, um, and uh, we're on pace to, to have a bigger year this year. Really? Yeah. So we're very fortunate. Um, I don't know what happened. I mean, the cigar market changed. Obviously, um, you know, during the pandemic, everybody was started smoking cigars, and there was like a new wave of of people being more vocal about smoking, and even celebrities showing off that they like to smoke cigars. Yeah. And I think that just helps the culture so much, uh, which is awesome for the industry. So aside from that, I can't figure out what else happened with Tatuai other than I think people started gravitating to the brand, maybe because of the exposure from the hand-rolled movie or something. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been great, dude. I mean, I can't sure, complain. I'm sure the you guys are happy. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. That is all that matters. Uh, so speaking of product and, and doing great, like what do you have set up for this coming year? Well, we have a new PCA cigar that uh, we did. It's a six and three eighths by 54 Sumatra wrapper, uh, box of 20, uh, $15 retail. Every cigar that's sold of this uh, particular cigar, I kick back money to the PCA to help with legislation, uh, le uh, legislative support and, you know, fighting the fight against, you know, the government's trying to tax us uh, for no reason and helping states get a 50 cent cap on cigars has happened a lot lately. So um, it's really why I do that is to give back to the, the organization. Yeah. Kind of like, like I do with the TA cigar. Right. So, and then I have a jar on display and a cigar there, but honestly, the jars are work in progress and it, it's probably gonna, even though it's gonna be labeled the 20th anniversary cigar, it probably won't come out until my 22nd anniversary because I like to age stuff a lot. Yeah. And usually with this pr type of project, I would probably age it for at least a year in the jar before I ship it. Make sure it's perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, and then uh, we have a 20th anniversary Esteli cigar. So made in Esteli as opposed to Miami. Uh, one's called the Grand Merveille, which is a 6 and one eighth by 46. And the other is a uh, Grand Chasseur, which is a 6 and 3 eighths by 54. Like the bigger brother of the Bon Chasseur, right? Yeah, it is, yeah. And the yeah it's actually a redux of the Grand Chessor that I did for the TAA 10 years ago. Oh, wow. So I, it hasn't been seen for 10 years. That's awesome. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> I like bringing back old stuff, and especially when, you know, 20 years with the company, it, I get to go big, you know, way back deep in and dig out old projects, and people get excited because they never had a chance to try them. Old to you, new to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, some people know about them. Yeah. They just, they they have to pay too much money on the secondary market for them, <laughs> so they're happier that I'm actually re-releasing something. Obviously, tobacco changes, but I try to put it as close as possible to the original. I remember, for what it's worth, the Belonk was one of my favorite first cigars back when I started awesome. smoking. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of made me it's realize what it's all about. Yeah, great size. It, it, I'll tell you, the, the molds are, are have been a, a bitch to get because we, we, we bought those molds so long ago, and the molds came from a guy that used to make molds for Cuba. And he disappeared or went out of business. And now we were trying to find a mold maker to make the same molds, but no one could get the shape correct. So we actually, my nephew retrofitted the old molds to make them work properly. <laughs> and because uh, they were plastic injection and, and sometimes we use wood and sometimes we use plastic. But this was a plastic injection mold that came from that one particular guy. And it was hard to find someone that could actually replicate the size perfectly. So what we did was we kind of made a, a hybrid between a, a wood mold and the plastic injection mold to make to use those forms still. Right. That's a fun. I mean, I'll tell you, Cuban people are pretty good at, at, at doing uh, amazing things with uh, their hands. So that they were able to do a great job. Obviously, I can't just give all the credit to my nephew. The people in the factory in Nicaragua probably did most of the work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but if you gave it the thumbs up, then I'm sure they nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, they nailed it. And then. Uh, Shit, we have stuff uh, from Atelier, the Atelier Roxy, which is uh, made after my brother's dog who passed away. We always do cigars after dogs that pass away. Uh, we're, we're all dog people. 
and it, it's just so we have a, a memory. Yeah. You know, yeah. something that we can carry on. Yeah, awesome. And then um, we have a surrogate Big Ten. The Big Ten was released last year as a limited edition in the, in the Grand Britannica size, the Belong size. But this year is a a new size that's a permanent addition to the line. All right. Yeah. That's cool. So yeah, a lot of stuff. And then Halloween monster. Uh, this year is the face. Yeah, and I, I used to bring the monster box for display, but it created too much noise yeah. around the show because we have enough to show already. Right. And uh, I want it to be a surprise also. Sure. I'll and start leaking things out around September of that. Yeah, but October is obviously the, the main month there. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So that actually makes a pretty good segue because sure. uh, this year we've done something a little different and we asked our customers at the stores and online to send in questions that they might have. Cool. Right? So. Straight from the horse's mouth, we have some tatuaje questions here. No hard questions. <laughs> yeah. So this one comes all the way from San Salvador, El Salvador. Oh, very cool. Yep. Wow. My mom's from there. He's got a good reach. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, worldwide, man. Uh, so he wa speaking of monsters, what originated the name? Like, what caused the series to be born? Okay. Right? So I was always into making limited edition projects, small batch stuff early on. Uh -huh. And I was in Boston, Massachusetts at a cigar store called Gloucester Street Cigars. And I had made a couple, like, small batch things for them. One was called the Pork Tenderloin. Sure. One was called the Pork Chop. Uh -huh. My buddy Jose, his nickname was Pork Chop. That's where the Pork Chop comes from. A little short Puerto Rican guy. And uh, he goes, you should do something with a theme. And I go, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, And I started thinking of, like, collaborations or some type of theme around something and I had an idea to do this thing called Rivals which I never did uh -huh. but it was going to be something with a basketball theme okay. and the boxes would be the colorways of the basketball teams but I wouldn't call it the Laker or sure, the Celtic yeah, yeah. but they would just be colorways and it, would be, it was just going to be called Rivals yeah. it happened to be that that year the Celtics and the Lakers actually went to the championship and I never did it though so I gave up on that idea but then He's like, now let's think about something different. And he he was a big sneakerhead. Okay. Like he's a huge sneakerhead, had a huge sneaker collection, and he pulled out a pair of Nike Frankenstein's. And I was like, dude, monsters. I go, that's cool. And before I and literally, I, within like ten minutes, I had a box design that I was already going to go for. I was going to do the, the thirteen count in the box. The, the bands were going to mimic the colorway of a monster character. The size, I was going to try to make it represent the monster as much as possible. Right, yeah. And I said, obviously, the first one has to be Frank. I don't call him Frankenstein, you know, or uh, Dracula. I call him Frank, Drac. Is that a co copyright thing or just? I just do theme. it to protect myself. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are public domain, but honestly, I choose to sure. steer down the, the, <laughs> the smart path. And Pe the, the people know path. what it is, you know? <laughs> You know, when I was younger, I went through some trademark issues that I didn't understand about, and I learned really quickly that trademarks were an important thing for people, and I have a lot of trademarks that I protect. Sure. So when I did these things, like this is a good example. I don't make these shirts for sale. We make them for us to, to wear at the show, yeah. and we, we base it off of 20th Century Fox, obviously, Tatua, 20th Tatuai Cigars, right. just, to, uh, just to have fun for us, but people are like, can I buy one? I'm like, no, I can't sell them. They did just for us, and I get. We do we, every year. We do different ones, and it's always like a, <laughs> yeah, a Twitter one last one. year. Yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. And same font, same look. So we always do this for fun for us to wear, and people are like, "I want to buy them." I, I go, we "Can't. We don't sell them." We have another uh, logo shirt that just has the 20 logo on it that I'll probably end up putting out to the, the consumers, but uh, not 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 these ones. For you guys. Yeah. Okay. And I'm curious, are you a big horror fan? Yeah, I was when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah, and I was a big Friday the 13th fan, obviously. Nice. Right. Um, obviously, you know, Michael Myers, too. I mean, like, all those movies just, I enjoyed I laugh at them. Uh, but it's, every once in a while I get jumpy. Yeah, sure. But I, I've always dug them. But the first real um, exposure to horror films for me, it wasn't even a horror film. It was an old Abbott and Costello meet the monsters. Oh, wow. And... It was, or I think it was Frank, meet Frankenstein or Dracula, whatever it was, but it was an old Abbott and Costello. And I'll tell you, that this day I watch it, I still laugh my app off. That's yeah. how. <laughs> but it's just funny. Um, so yeah, I like, I like the creatures. I like the characters. Sure, I was, I was um, thinking. He it's really been it. tough though to, to kind of. I. That's why I stopped at thirteen. Mm -hmm. 
13 was always the initial number. Sure. But it was always like, okay, what ones? And I had them mapped out, kind of like, okay, this is one, two old, one new, two old, one new. And then eventually, you know, ended it. But then for the Monster Mash last year or two years ago, I did the Creature. Yeah. So the Creature was in the box, but now people are asking me to bring the Creature out as a full release. So haven't thought about it yet, but. Let's see what the future holds. Yeah, I still have to play with blends on it. You know, the blend itself, but I have to play with sizes because I don't know if I want to do the same size that was in the mash. Yeah, so. yeah you don't want to sacrifice the integrity of the blend just to, you know, yeah. make a release. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're having fun with it. And uh, now it's going through the Redux series because I thought 13 was enough. And, and again, it goes back to people having to pay secondary prices for an original Frank. Yeah. Some people are paying, you know, $100 for an original Frank. And this helps the guy that, that can't afford the $100 to pay $13 instead. Yep. So. Yep. Cool. And then one last final question yeah. for you. This is from Greg from Miami. Um, from Miami, okay. Yeah, he's asking, will you ever bring back the Loki? Okay, so the, the Loki, as you know, my puppy that passed away, um, that was kind of a, in honor of him. It's a, a small little petite robusto. We make it as a small batch, regular production thing in Miami but only one roller rolls them and we only have a certain amount of them and once we get them, they usually sell out pretty quick. Uh, so just be patient because uh, they, they're always in production, but it's on very, a small, very batch. small batch. Yeah, you're talking about maybe 25 boxes on average per month. Whoa. Yeah, okay. so it's not a lot. Sometimes less, actually. Whoa, yeah. Okay, yeah. So they're around, they're just really hard to get. and. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not an inexpensive cigar either. Yeah. <laughs> But it's made in the United States. I'll be honest, everything in, in, the, in the U.S. factory went up this year um, because we needed to. Plus, I wanted to make sure that the rollers in the factory are getting paid more money. Now, that's really important for me because it's, it's not easy to roll a cigar. It's not easy to sit down for eight hours a day and to make things that we absolutely love to enjoy. And I want to make sure that they're happy along the whole journey with us. So. It's, it's it's a hard thing, and, and we're you know we need them, yeah. we appreciate them, and they deserve it. Yeah. So the Coho New 2003 Series L, that's the Loki. Oh, okay. Yeah. Series L. Awesome. Cool. So Greg, you can always pick them up. Just look harder. <laughs> uh, we might have some soon. Yeah. So Pete, I think that just about does it. Any last messages for the uh, Neptune customers watching today? No. Thank you for the support. Uh, thanks to everybody at Neptune for really pushing the product and uh, and keeping the the product alive. So thanks for everything. Thank you, Pete. Thanks, bro. Have a great show. Continued success.